uh, a little after 1030, so we'll go ahead and get started. I think we've got everybody else with us. Uh, Commissioner, how are you this morning? Do what? I'm sorry. I said, how are you this morning? Oh, we're live and kicking so far. Just trying to, trying to keep everything rocking and rolling. You want to go ahead and give you an update? Yes, sir. All right. Um, the, uh, our county call center's operational as of Monday. Uh, Jared, that works down at the rec center, is, is uh, filling those duties, uh, working out of the EOC. Uh, again, that number is 706-253-8978. Uh, or email your questions, uh, or email at questions at pickenscountyga.gov. And I think y'all, uh, I think we've got to be damn full and uh, got it on the paper. Uh, we are still updating social and traditional media daily and communicating with the partners. Uh, we're still dealing with that. Uh, heads up on the face shields. Um, the local company with 3D printing capabilities for face shields got us half of our order yesterday. Uh, we got those to our county bar and EMTs and we're hoping to get the rest of the order later this week. Any actors will share uh, with you and all if uh, whatever they got extra. Well, Sloan's sitting here, so he's got some of the headbands uh, with him uh, as we go forward. The um, Other than that, everything seems to be doing good. In fact, Dan did a good job with the paper. Uh, a lot of information at this time and, and what's going on. And uh, I know he's been covered up. And uh, I know you all been seeing a lot of uh, pink stripes and pink writing on roads around town and uh, old Highway 5 from Jasper to uh, Talking Rock. But that is a... Uh, Surveying company that's working for Pike Electric because George Power is looking at upgrading underground and overhead lines for three phase service going towards Talking Rock and I'm, I'm assuming going out towards Industrial Boulevard to the new substations. If you see those going on there, that's uh, that's what's happening at that point. How's the uh, the call center? What uh, you get many calls there? What kind of questions are you seeing? We got uh, we got ten calls Monday. <coughs> the uh, uh, and he was able to handle all of them but one. Uh, the only one he wasn't able to haul, uh, take care of was a MAX bus. Uh, I had contacted uh, Jonathan Ray at MAX, Mount Mary Transit, uh, to see what the status was. In case most of y'all know, Lonnie, Lonnie Waters' wife, Ruth Ann, um, handles all those uh, uh, calls in. But MAX, that's kind of, uh, they're trying to come up with a process of firing the buses back up with the uh, social distancing involved. So right as he talked to me uh, Tuesday morning, they're looking at probably no more than three per bus on certain, just certain things. I think one of them was either going uh, going to the uh, uh, drugstore or, or a doctor's office. And um, that was all that Jonathan said that they would probably be allowed to do under under that scenario and he hasn't got back with me to see if they he's finalized it with the group out of Dalton because these uh these match bus are handled by their federal and um, they're handled up through Dalton and out of Chattanooga uh even though the counties pay for the buses uh the federal government pays for 80 percent of, of the bus itself so uh those are handled uh, as I said earlier through a contract out of Dalton and out of Chattanooga so I haven't heard the latest. Uh, I don't know if they fire them back up or not. And, and if they do fire them up, they'll have to run some of them with wheelchair accessibility. But uh, I haven't heard the latest on that. Okay. Anything else uh, out of your office? I can't think of nothing offhand. Um, everything seems to be, uh, believe it or not, peaceful and quiet to a point. Uh, we're still having... Uh, a few call call ins. Nobody's nobody seems to be ill or anything. And we're still trying to run this area here over here that skeleton crew. Uh, build some building and all going on to a point, and uh, just trying to do what we can to keep keep us going. Uh, road department still uh, still working split shift in the road department, and and, um, and they're still repairing. We got a road up towards uh, Price Creek that we're replacing the covered on, getting ready for paving this summer. Uh, having we get this crud out of here. Uh, water department is, is going strong. Uh, trying to get some things done up and get some water lines replaced. 
Um, and as far as I know, everything so far so good. Gas prices are still dropping. Gas and fuel prices. I'm really surprised at that. Uh, so, uh, but we're keeping them on. We're keeping the tanks monitored, make sure they don't get too low, and uh, keep those uh, resources uh, available. Y'all got y'all got anything for me? Nothing on me. How about anybody else? So far, so good. Uh, Johnny Nicholson, you got anything on the EMA side? Nothing on the EMA side. Jasper PD got their order. Yours is still being picked. Okay. So I'm try and get out of it. Do they need some help with us coming down and picking it for them? <laughs> <laughs> I talked to them this morning, and they said that it was at Winston the Warehouse, did I say, two days ago, three days ago? And they're picking it, and we should get a call any day. It could be today. Their deliveries is Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. So as soon as it gets delivered from the warehouse to our district, then they'll call us and we'll have to go pick it up. So, but I talked basically talked to them down at the SOC this morning, and she told me that it was uh, that it was in the warehouse being picked as we speak. So that's more than I got. The last couple of days that I talked to them, so you know, and, and the coroner, his body bags, they're on back order. Uh, just the the state or nobody's got any, and they've ordered fourteen hundred, and they're all on back order. So you know, if if, if anybody needs them, they they don't have it. Right. <clears throat> any uh, anything else, Johnny, from the EMA side? That's all of it right now. I'm gonna send a. Email to you, Jeff, where you track your hours you're using or the number of people. It's an aggravating form. You just have to sit there and read it, study it, because it's not real forthcoming the way they want you to do it. Okay. And then we'll send a report into Gmail every Monday. All right. The way they're wanted. But you'll be getting that email as soon as we finish this. Yep. Johnny? Is it only uh, for fires work, or will it be for supplies and materials too? It's just for the number of people you got doing the stuff. Okay. So as as of right now, you want us to hold any uh, forms for the uh, supplies and materials. Make make sure you keep them documented. Okay. Yep. We just hold those for now. We're right. COVID nineteen on all hours. Right. Okay. Hey, also, uh, I know you guys have the updated uh, pandemic flu plan. Uh, you, uh, did you email me a copy of that? I tried the other day, and I basically it's sitting on my desk. I uh, made copies of it for Chris when he asked me, and it's been sitting on my desk since that day. So I will try to get it over there today, and uh, that way you have it. But my, it, it's too big for me to email, so I, I just printed it off and or made copies of it. And I'll bring it over. I've got to go over to the shop after we get through here. So I'll swing by there and drop it up. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, Mayor Larch, how's things at the city this morning? Fine, and let's keep it that way. Yeah. I think I'm muted. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, everything is fine, Donnie, and, um, and and I have absolutely nothing to report this morning other than the fact that no news is good news. I'll defer to Brandon for an update on, on operations and let, um, and let him say what needs to be said there. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff, uh, everyone. Once again, all is quiet, and I have nothing to add to the group, believe it or not. That is a good report. We'll move down to uh, Sloan Elrod uh, with uh, Fire and EMS County. Uh, yes, um, currently we, we have gotten a few of our supplies that we have uh, ordered from DPH. Uh, there were very limited amount of the supplies that we had ordered. Uh, we did not get everything that we had requested. Uh, but as far as supplies, we're still doing okay at the moment. Um, 
I do, uh, as far as our staff goes, uh, I have had two paramedics that one is waiting on a roof, uh, didn't hope to come back. Um, and then I've got another one that actually had ran a call last night at their other uh, job that was supposed to work today. Um, and it, basically we're going to have to wait on, on the report of um, why the person passed. Uh, they had flu-like symptoms for several weeks, so um, they're actually going into uh, quarantine themselves until we can get results back from uh, why the person had passed. Um, it was actually a different state. It wasn't, wasn't here. It was just across the line of North Carolina, but um, they do work for us part-time. Um, other than that, really, don't have a whole lot else. Um, other than, like I say, supplies are, uh, we're still waiting on the stuff that we've ordered uh, from other places. Um, and then still just waiting on, uh, hopefully, DPH to come through with some more supplies that we have uh, that we had requested through them. But we're doing okay on supplies at the moment. Thank you, Sloan. Uh, Steve Roper, Fire Chief with uh, Jasper. Good morning, folks. Uh, things are holding steady for us in the city, like Brandon and the mayor said. Uh, call volume is still a little low. Our supplies are holding steady. Uh, We've got a few addresses that have been highlighted for extra precaution, but other than that, it's business as usual. Okay. So, uh, Vaughn's with us. Vaughn, anything to add? No, I don't have anything to add this morning. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chief Lovell with Jasper. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, like John said, we picked up our supplies yesterday, not all of, it, all of it was there. Uh, we did get several gloves that are medium, and they about don't fit anybody here, so if anybody knows anybody, we may reach out to the nursing homes or something, share some of the boxes, and maybe take a couple of boxes and see how some of the girls might uh, John told me just to keep resubmitting orders for the supplies that I didn't get do the best I can. Uh, Sheriff, did you get that group email? I mean, the text Tom Phillip this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You did? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Tom Phillip, the oil company, sent out something, I think, all the way from Dane Kirby up to the far south, uh, of course, Frank Reynolds, Sheriff of Cherokee. I'm not resting on my BP now, folks are going to uh, register on my own. Other than that, we had one that we uh, had to take to jail uh, yesterday. Uh, that one needed to go. I guess you probably briefed on that a little bit, but the sheriff. Uh, 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 but anyway, uh, other than uh, a few domestics, uh, our call volume is low as well. We are uh, implementing just uh, folks are brought into the jail now. They're not being allowed to be brought all the way into intake. Uh, that we're doing our screening process in the Sally Port area. So if you let your guys know when they bring somebody into the jail, we're now screening the Sally Port. Uh, before they brought into intake. So uh, just let them know that our intake is great. Okay. So that's it. Andrew! Yes, sir. Chief, did you hear me? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, would you, again, Sheriff, would you repeat, while I got my tech guy here, the intake process, I didn't catch, but about half the time. All right, we're going to, uh, today, anybody that has crossed through the facilities, uh, intake officer will be in the Sally Port. Uh, they'll do the intake screening area in the Sally Port area. And once we'll determine if they're allowed to be actually brought into the 
the jail and the bookend process. Okay, I got most of that. It was kind of chopped. I think yesterday that guy, they had to get six of them to get the guy into jail. So six of your deputies had to get him in, so he was a handful. So. But uh, we got it. I'll, I'll let the guys know. Okay. Uh, also, uh, in the jail right now, our, our current population is at 43. Uh, everything is, is running smooth. We don't have any issues uh, that I'm aware of. Everybody's fine. Uh, no sickness uh, to report. Uh, our staff uh, is all good here at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we had one, uh, one, one of our staff members who uh, came down with some symptoms uh, last week, uh, was tested. Uh, luckily, the test turnaround was uh, was pretty quick. Uh, went down to the Woodstock testing site, was tested, uh, came back negative. Uh, waited his uh, 72 hours with no symptoms and uh, returned back to work. So uh, everything is good um, as far as the staff. Um, we have got some, uh, luckily, uh, an outside vendor. Uh, we ordered some... Uh, KN95 masks that are coming in hopefully uh, this week. Uh, we've also found the vendor for some hand sanitizer. Uh, I think we've got that ordered uh, about cheap. Uh, should be coming in uh, in 11 days. In 11 days, we'll have some hand sanitizer. And uh, we've got a, another local vendor uh, that we're gonna be looking at with uh, some chemicals uh, that allow us to fog uh, uh, for the, uh, the virus that's supposed to kill the, the virus. Uh, it's a fogging system, and uh, they're supposed to come in and do a demonstration for us. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to take a look at that later this week as well. Uh, what we're using now is just a, a spray that we can spray on the surface that has to sit for five minutes to kill the virus. Uh, this uh, fogging system uh, will actually allow us to uh, kill the virus uh, much quicker, and it's supposed to be more efficient. We're going to take a look at that uh, later in the week. Um, outside of that, uh, Chris, can you give us an update on the uh, uh, our partnership with CARES and how that's going? Uh, we added five more this week uh, that we're delivering. We did find three that were kind of milking the system that are starting to get delivered and then finding a way the next day to go and pick up their own box. So. Uh, instead of 50 pounds of food, they're getting 100 pounds of food a week. So we've been working with CARES to try to call that list, and we knew it was coming. Uh, but we're right at the, the 40 uh, families mark right now that we're, we're getting that out to. We picked up two more that requested prescriptions uh, tomorrow and Friday to be picked up and delivered. So we've got those, those going. I know CARES uh, has partnered with several churches. Revolution Church is one of them, and they've got a company – or a ministry that's coming in tomorrow at Revolution Church to give out boxes of frozen meat. So people will be able to go pick up frozen meat. Um, I believe they've got 150 boxes that they're going to be giving out. Uh, so there'll be a, a good sized crowd, I'm sure, kind of flooding their parking lot because CARES is not providing meat. So uh, this group's going to have that. And they put it on a first come, first serve basis. So um, if y'all get any calls of people that, that have, have not had uh, any meat in their freezer and they've been eating canned goods, then that's, that's a place you can send them tomorrow at 6 uh, that they're going to be giving out. And they're, they're partnered up with CARES as far as picking up other other stuff with them. So, that's all. And also, uh, while we, I know Mary's videoing, uh, just a reminder, you know, CARES is looking for donations. Uh, I know they've been really stepping up their uh, their support to the community during this time. Uh, so if anybody would like to uh, help support CARES and uh, their support for the community, I know it's greatly appreciated. The foundation's going to try to help them out a little bit this week as well. So just uh, keep them in mind. And uh, any questions from anybody that uh, we've overlooked uh, or any input? Uh, if not, I'd like to ask Mary if she's got any questions uh, that maybe she has got from uh, from her folks through No Pickens. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't really have anything right now, except I'm sure y'all saw that Kemp is extending the state of emergency, but not necessarily the shelter in place till May 13th. So I guess will the county and city have to just 
let that one go away that's through the 30th or whatnot. I don't know. It's all confusing. <laughs> I think he's talking today at four, so it'll probably be more clear. Okay. Any comments on that from the commissioner or the mayor? We'll see what he says at four. And um, uh, ours is already out there anyway, so we'll mirror whatever we need to mirror. But uh, we put it up in place in the beginning so that we don't have to go back and readdress. Yeah, I'm, with the, I'm with the mayor. We'll just see what the what the governor says uh, here later on today, and uh, see what we do from that point. Because um, I know I know we got to get a community or two that's having some questions come up inside the gates that, that they're dealing with their board up there on some little different issues what we're dealing with. But uh, uh, we'll just we'll just wait and see what Governor Kemp's got on the agenda. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, we appreciate you being with us and again uh, putting this information out and uh, again if anybody has any questions about what we're doing or concerns uh, we've got the, uh, the call line up and uh, obviously they can reach out to any of us uh, you know, through email or phone calls or whatever but uh, we appreciate you uh, again getting this information out we appreciate each one of you joining us uh, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and uh, I know Friday is a uh, good Friday, but uh, we'll still be here if anybody you know, that, uh, is going to be joining us. We'll be back uh, 10.30 on Friday. Again, thank everybody for joining us.